Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. I'm MCGo101, and in today's video, we'll be working on this 2011 Dodge Ram 1500 Sport, and today, we'll be changing out the front driver caliper. So, uh, long story short, this truck now has almost 250,000 kilometers, and the uh, brakes are were original, and they are starting to wear out and or seize. Um, it started with the rear calipers. Uh, they seized one at a time, um, so I had them professionally replaced. Um, I did the right rear passenger, and about two months later, the driver rear uh, seized. Uh, so when the front passenger seized, uh, I replaced that about uh, four months ago now. I expected the driver to go soon, and sure enough, it is seizing up on me. So I went ahead and got the new caliper. Uh, this is a Ray Bestos part number, FRC11896N. I went with this one because it is not a remanufactured unit. Um, it is brand new, uh, has a nice coating, while that's good for up here in Canada. Comes with brand new hardware and uh, some banjo fittings, or sorry, the uh, washers for the banjo fitting. Uh, so we are going to tackle this now. This isn't a terrible job um, but if you're unfamiliar with uh, Taking brake lines off if you're not comfortable with it. Um, I don't really recommend doing it uh, Just because there is some issues you could run into uh, So again, my videos are just instructional um, uh, Informative uh, do anything on your own at your own risk um, so, uh, some tools you'll need. Um, I'm just going to use an impact with a 22 to remove my wheels, uh, various different, uh, ratchets, uh, lights. I am going to put a little tiny bit of extra silicone on the slide pins. And without further ado, uh, you'll also need a jack, jack stand, trouble light, etc. Without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm going to start by jacking up the truck. We'll get the wheel off. Let's get started. All right, so let's get this off. Uh, so, like I said, I got the truck jacked up. I used the front cross member, and it is reinforced with a jack stand. Um, you'll see this catch pan because when we do actually remove the brake line from the caliper, you are going to lose some fluid. So that's going to be there to catch it. Um, so the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to tear it from the top down. So with a 13 mil, we'll crack the two uh, fasteners that are holding the caliper slide pins. Now, something that's very handy to have is I just happen to have this weird hook thing. Um, so when I take the caliper off of the rotor and hub, I'm going to hang it off the control arm like that. Uh, so that will keep it from putting unnecessary uh, stress onto the brake line itself. Um, before I found that, I did just use bungee cords. Uh, that'll work as well. But you definitely, uh, the caliper is obviously very heavy, so you do not want to let the caliper uh, dangle and the uh, brake line being the only thing holding it because it will tear or rip that line. So being prepared is half the job sometimes. So just removing this last fastener for the caliper uh, itself. And that's why it's not coming out. The caliper slide pin is spinning. So if the caliper uh, bolt is sliding, sometimes you can just take an adjustable wrench or and hold on to the slide pin like that as you back in the nut. And 
this has to get on it. And you'll get to the point where you can just undo it by hand. And we'll put that to the side. So, here comes a tricky part. I'm going to try and take this caliper off with the brake pads on it. Now, sometimes you may need a little pry bar, so we'll get one of those. Or a nice big flathead screwdriver. So, being careful to hold on to that caliper. Again, we don't want it to fall. I'm just gonna wedge it up. like so, we will pop the top of our caliper off. So again, being careful with your brake lines, and I'm just going to rest it here for a second, but on closer inspection, the uh, pistons are actually fairly damaged on this one. Um, again, 250,000 kilometers, so I expected there to be damage, and uh, yeah, uh, you can't afford to be driving around with a seized caliper, so now, with that hook thing that I showed you earlier, I'm going to feed the hook onto the caliper, like that, and then I'm going to hang it on the control arm. Alright, so we'll leave that there for a couple minutes. Now, I did just replace pads, rotors about four months ago. So I'm going to carefully remove the pad. We'll inspect it. So remembering uh, which side that these pads went on, I'm going to put that to the side because I do plan on reusing these as they have lots of life left. That one looks fine. All right, so now we have to remove the caliper bracket. Uh, now on this truck, it is a 21 mil. Now, and if they are tight, a little trick that I use, extension with a deep socket, throw right on the end, gives you extra torque and extra leverage to Crank that loose. And on to the next one. These are big bolts, so just take your time. And this just goes to show it can be done with hand tools. There's caliper bracket bolt one. We'll put that to the side. We are going to reuse that. Caliper bracket bolt number two. And you want to hang on to that caliper bracket as you want to do this so it doesn't drop on you. Damn, caliper bracket removed. So we'll put that to the side. All right. Um, now, now what I may do before I go ahead and remove that caliper is I'm just going to prep the new one to go in. Um, so let's go ahead and get that started. All right, so we're going to prep our new caliper. 
so uh, like I said, this one's brand new. So I just separated the actual caliper here from the bracket. Now this is what I do. Um, so I'm just gonna inspect the slide pins and I'm gonna put just a tiny extra bit of brake grease on the slide pin. Now I have to emphasize just a tiny bit because uh, too much is bad. You just want a little bit of lubricant to help it slide in and out. And you don't want it to cause any hydrolocks or issues. So literally just an extra film and reinstall until it hooks into the rubber. And we'll inspect this one as well. So it pops out. Just gonna put a little dab extra on it. Can't uh, emphasize that enough. It's just a skim coat of grease on this. Just want to make sure that it's covered because you don't want to have to take it apart because it's not moving proper and reinstall. Now we have to prep our used brake pads. Um, if you have new ones, great. If not, um, you'll have to clean up your old ones. So orientation, that'll be the outside. So this is going to be the inner pad. I'm just going to hit this one with a bit of brake clean and we'll wipe it off. Just want to clean up any old grease that you can. Just like so. And I'm going to do the same for the outer brake pad as well. A little bit of brake clean. Just want to be careful not to get any lubricant or try to avoid getting any brake clean onto the surface of the brake pad. I try not to even touch it. Um, now, uh, on mine, I noticed there's a little chunk out of it. So after I'm ready to install the pad. I'm actually just going to scuff it up with a little bit of sandpaper. But before that, what I like to do is grease the areas where the slides are going to go. So on your caliper, you'll see grooves for where your slides rest. I'm just going to liberally put some nice grease in there. Not only does it help it move, but it also impedes rust and corrosion. So it's just good practice. When I get everywhere that that's going to slide. Just like that. Excellent. So now in our new brake hardware kit, I'll dump all these goodies out. You'll see some brand new slides. So they just fit on the, well, you could actually grease up the ears as well. It's not going to hurt anything. Just keep them nice and free. There's one. Just a tad more grease on that pad ear. And there's two. So that's the orientation uh, last inspection seems okay a little bit of brake dust I'm gonna go ahead and slide that into our position just like that so uh, I'm just gonna take a little sandpaper to this And I've also noticed there is a bit of junk inside the channel here. So I'm going to try and chop that out. And 
And then because of asbestos, you don't want to be breathing that in. Asbestos. All right, just a little scuff. And we'll do the same thing for the other pad. Uh, we'll grease the ears of the actual brake pad. And we'll put our new slides on. One, two, Now, that is ready to go in. Now, bef so the way I'm going to do this is I don't want to leak brake fluid onto this. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to throw this on anyway. So let's get you in position and I'll show you how that's done. All right, so before I get too far, Give that rotor a quick clean. All right, so now that that's out of the way, we'll prepare our 21 milli millimeter caliper bracket bolts. So this is the way I like to do it. As one unit, I'm going to very carefully feed the whole caliper bracket over the rotor and in position. And I can start by threading it in by hand. Once it bites, I'll throw the other one in. And we will get our ratchet. <coughs> and we will carefully tighten this up. Just being careful not to jostle the pads that we've just installed. I'm trying not to get any dirt, dust, or debris in between the pads and the rotor. So I'm just going to snug these up by hand for now. And we'll put a torque on them when everything's all said and done. We are on to actually changing out the caliper. All right, so now we need to remove the actual caliper itself. Mm. So it gets a little bit tricky. Try and stick with me. Uh, so you're going to need your catch pin because we are going to lose some brake fluid. Uh, I've just draped this little towel over to keep any dirt and debris out of the caliper that we just cleaned. Now on my banjo bolt on my 2011 Ram, it is a 15 mil. Um, and just to get it ready, uh, I took the caliper hook 
off and I just put it through the ear on the caliper so that way the banjo bolt is facing me. Uh, and again, trying not to twist that brake line too much. So we're going to go ahead and crack that loose. And we'll go ahead and back this banjo bolt out and it is already leaking fluid as it should be. See if I can take this out by hand. Now we're gonna have to reuse this bolt, so just be very careful with it. And there comes the fluid. Now I'm gonna carefully pry on where that bolt was. You have to break the seal. I'm gonna grab a screwdriver for that. And just like that, we'll separate the brake line from the actual caliper. So, uh, again, making sure the brake fluid is dripping into your pan. You can now go ahead and remove this big old caliper. And we'll put that big old beast to the side. And be careful because there is brake fluid still in it. And brake fluid is corrosive, so we'll try and clean that up as quick as we can. Okay, so uh, one last uh, bit of prep for the new caliper. So this yellow spot here is where the uh, brake line is going to go. So we'll carefully pull that out. Now I'll explain these to you. So these are the crush washers for the brake line. Uh, you'll make sure that you have two. So what's going to happen is the brake line is a square block with a hole in it. Um, you'll have a crush washer here. I'm going to use flat side down and then the brake line block is going to sit on top of that and then the last crush washer will I believe go on top yes and the bolt no sorry yes the brake line block will go on to one crush washer the next crush washer will go on top of the brake line and then the bolt will hold it all together so very carefully um, what I'm going to do is just clean up that brake line just a little bit more. Make sure that the uh, areas where the crush washers are going to go on okay. So here's our brake line. And you'll notice on mine, the crush washer is still on there. So we will have to make sure that... Uh, the crush washer is removed. Because that will never seal if there is still a washer in it. Just like that, and we're going to clean up that ceiling surface again. Just got a little bit of corrosion, so I'm just carefully getting rid of it. And we'll do the same for the bottom, just inspect it. All right. 
it right. Now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang our new caliper on this here hook, and that will allow us to button this down nicely. So let's get that in position. Oh, and I'll also clean up my banjo bolt, which I have to reuse. Unfortunately, the new one did not come with one, but that's okay. Doesn't have to be a lot, just wherever the caliper is going to be touching the pad. And we'll do the same on the back pad. Very carefully take our caliper and we'll fit it over our brake pads like so and having my caliper bolts handy I'll feed them in by hand is just to help me orientate the brake line properly. So we still have our crush washer in on the bottom. And I have my other crush, crush washer ready to go in as well as my banjo bolt. So now, we got to place our brake line directly over that crush washer. And we'll get our second crush washer in position. And we will feed our banjo bolt right back on. So I'm holding the brake line in place, sorry if I'm in your way, as I screw the banjo bolt in. Sorry for the angle, my shop's a little packed right now. Let's see if I can show you where I'm at. So you'll see that we now have our brake line connected to our caliper. So what I'm going to do is tighten the banjo bolt just by hand. So we want to seat those crush washers. You don't have to kill it as the uh, crush washers are copper. But you'll definitely want it good and snug. And it has already stopped leaking. That's good. Just going to clean it up and inspect for any, any leaks. And I don't see any yet. So, what uh, what I do to bleed, um, it's like an old mechanics trick, um, but I'm going to do a simple thing called gravity bleeding. Um, so, you'll see on this little fitting here, it has a rubber cap. I'm going to go ahead and pop that off.
And then I'm just going to get a wrench and we're going to crack that open. Now the idea behind the gravity bleed is that this brake uh, relief valve is inside the caliper. So when gravity uh, fills up the caliper, once the caliper is bled, this relief will start to leak. So what we're looking for, it may take a couple minutes, um, depends how much air got in there. Uh, so we're going to crack it loose and we'll wait for it to start weeping out. And once it's weeping out uh, fairly consistently, we'll retighten it. And on second thought, I'm just going to use a 10 mil wrench. So now crack loose. I'm going to open it. And now we will wait for that to bleed. Now open all the way. Should be allowing the air to escape. And again, be patient. This may take a minute. And again, be ready with your brake fluid, uh, kit can, and your bag. And just like that, you'll see that it is now dripping out nice and steady. So we're going to go ahead and tighten that back up. Don't have to kill it, just has to be nice and snug. And that caliper is now bled and ready to go. So you want to go ahead and clean up any residual that had leaked out. And we'll reinstall our cap and we're about ready to wrap this up all right so last but not least we have to ensure that everything is torqued down properly uh, so the torque specs are uh, on the bleed fitting uh, it's about 14 pounds um, so I'm just gonna do that by hand and just snug it up your banjo bolt is going to be 20 foot pounds. So I'll just set that. And that's a good 20. Now your caliper slide pins on my 1500 call for 24 foot pounds. It seems a little low, but last but not least, your caliper bracket pins are they need to be torqued to 130 foot pounds. We'll get the appropriate socket on here. We'll crank our torque wrench up. So 
So one twenty thirty. All right, so we will install the uh, the wheel, the lug nuts. Um, so two things you'll have to remember if you follow the video. Um, what I would recommend is checking your brake, brake fluid reservoir. Uh, it may require to be topped up, so that is very important. Secondly, um, as soon as you start the vehicle, you'll want to pump the brakes because your pedal will go right to the ground because we have worked on the brake system. So before you even put it in reverse or drive, Make sure you pump up your brake pedal. So we'll get our wheel back on. install the wheel uh, you shouldn't use impact but I have a cheater method so I put mine on the lowest setting they don't make wheel lugs like they used to uh, so the problem with impacts is if you use full torque, you can swell the lug nut and potentially worse. So on the lowest setting, crisscross. Now what I do, just a quick snap on medium setting. Now we'll remove our jack stand. And we'll lower our jack very carefully. And now I will torque the wheel. So I'm going to torque it to 110 and I'm going to recheck it after 100 kilometers. Very important that you recheck your torque, folks. And that is that. So, like I said, I'm just going to check the brake fluid reservoir and top up as needed. Just make sure to uh, double check if your vehicle takes dot three dot four. I think this takes dot three. Um, I have lots of it in stock. But yeah, <coughs> hopefully this helps somebody out. Um, this is how you change the front caliper on a Dodge Ram 1500. Um, again, mine was seizing up and uh, it was the only caliper I hadn't replaced. So went ahead and done it. 
Now the whole truck has brand new calipers, pads, rotors on all four corners, and it's good to go and nice and safe. Hopefully this helps somebody out. Um, if you liked the video, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.